Welcome, everybody, to the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. My name is Ross Benjamin. I'm your host of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. Today is Thursday, July 27th, and we have three Major League Baseball games that we're going to discuss today on the show with Mr. Chip Chirimbus of gamblersworld.net and uh, Mr. Doug Upstone of DocSports.com, two of the finest handicappers you'll find anywhere in the country. So if you want to know uh, a winning pick in the Rays and Astros game, the Rangers and Padres, and the Red Sox and the Giants, stay tuned because we got them for you. But let me, without further ado, let me talk to Mr. Chip Chirimus first, who continues to be at the top of the leaderboards at gamblersworld.net. Chipper, what's going on, my friend? Well, you know, we're just taking it a day at a time. Baseball's a long, long season. It's a bit of a grind. But uh, if you keep the discipline, uh, the consistency will be there. And right now we're in the middle of a wonderful streak. Uh, it's been great. We even hit before the All-Star break. And since the All-Star break, it's been lights out, particularly my strongest plays. I think 11 and 2 on since the All-Star break. Unbelievable. So that you could find all of Chip's paid selections. Those are his best selections. Right. Not the free picks he gives out on the show at gamblersworld.net. And the best part about going there, folks, uh, 10 of the finest handicappers you'll find anywhere in the country, including myself. And I'm going to give my put a star on my forehead. Um, and uh, our picks are guaranteed. So if you don't make a profit according to our grading system on any single game, multi game daily package, and any subscription of 30 days or less, we'll credit your account back, your exact purchase price. You can use that any which way you like, any time you want. And for any handicapper you want to use that on. So if you lose with me and you want to buy chippers uh, picks for the day and you, and I gave you $35 credit because I lost, you could use it on chipper. That's the way it goes. So uh, you can't ask for better than that. It's talking about not asking for better than that, Mr. Doug Upstone. It'll be his last appearance for a couple of weeks. Doug will be in Las Vegas next week. So he, uh, he'll he be away from the show. We'll miss him, but he's going to re-energize and come back for football season. Anyway, Doug, how are you, my man? I'm, I'm doing well. And you know what? And uh, this, this is pointed towards Chip. Chip, now you, you showed your uh, experience from your CNN days giving a professional athlete's uh, response to, to Ross's question to where, you know, it was like, hey, you know what? the this is how we do it it's a process we go along the line and so i like that it's just the it's the, turning the tables on uh you turning the tables on your people you used to interview all the time so i, I thought that was a great <laughs> answer that way it sure but was. myself personally yeah i'm doing great ross you know that uh it's still in red hot here arizona 25 days in a row of 110 or higher i think wow. is what we're up to and uh, so, so we have that and uh my uh MLB prop plays have been almost well, not that quite that hot, but they've been good at 18 and 10, 64.2 percent. A little bit on the teeter totter for uh, ba regular baseball picks, but then of course at this weekend, nothing Thursday, but on uh, on Friday, Ross's favorite, as I always like to talk about, the CFL always puts a smile on his face when I bring it up. That gives me motion sickness. Too many guys in motion, Chip. <laughs> anyway, Chipper, you wanted to chime in before, and uh, I know that you're feeling the heat in Las Vegas as well, correct? Well, you know, we had the lowest average temperature in the whole month of June, and we were loving it. So far in July, he's <laughs> had we've had like 15, 16 straight days, 110 degrees or more. And, you know, it cools off at night. It goes all the way down to 92. So we're not worried about what we're doing at nighttime either. But it's... <laughs> But it, it has been brutal in the month of July after a glorious June. We played golf almost every day. And now it's it's too tough to even go out on the golf course. Um, people are not out there. The golf courses are empty. Uh, I can I could see why. And, uh, you know, it's uh, a balmy 80 degrees here in western New York. But the difference is, is this. And, yeah, it's not going to be as hot as where you guys are. But but there's a vast difference. The humidity, humidity yeah. gets really high here where you guys get the dry humidity. And uh, if people don't know what that means, uh, spend about a week in Arizona and Las Vegas in the dry heat and uh, then go back north and you get that thick humidity in the air where you're sweating as soon as you come out of uh, an air conditioned room. So in any event, look, at here's what we've been we've been telling some stories this week and it's got a popular mm -hmm. uh, positive response, I should say, from our viewers and uh, folks uh, like to hear your 
thoughts on what we talk about uh, with these sports betting topics and our approach and how we do things and where we started from and how we evolved to the point we're at right now. But one of the questions I asked uh, both Jesse Shule and Sean Higgs yesterday, and I elaborated on myself, is uh, now they're, right now our main focal point is Major League Baseball, at least for a couple more weeks anyway. Um, and we took the viewers through, when we look at the Major League Baseball card daily, um, for example, I look at the starting pitching matchups first. Uh, I'm not a guy who gets down too early. I want to see where the line movement is and then determine if, in my eyes, if that's a public or a sharp move or what am I missing kind of thing. Uh, because I might like the opening line and all of a sudden the line moved against me. Did I miss something? So along those lines, guys, uh, I'd like if you could uh, kindly uh, share your thoughts with the audience and how you approach that on a daily basis. Uh, Doug, I'll start with you. Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I start the night before uh, mm-hmm. and I go through I have just a systematic approach where I come up and I create my own line. Okay. In terms of it's it's a you know, I'm not going to go through the whole process of it, but I create my own line and then I compare it versus what the actual line at that time is. So that's step one. Then before the end of the evening, I go back and then I look at if there's been any line movement and to, to determine if that there's just just plays that just jump out at me. OK, so it's not just not just comparisons, but things that situation wise make sense to me. OK, for as potential plays, get up the next morning. Go through everything yet again, okay? Just double check everything. See where the lines have gone to make determinations. Recheck maybe some of the uh, pitching matchups to make sure that I, I have what I'm looking for from that standpoint. And then go ahead, make my selections, do the write-ups, and here we go. Yeah, I, and uh, it's a basic way to go about it. Uh, everybody has their own philosophy. Uh, but the thing with guys like us is we very seldom panic and and make a how could I say it a knee jerk uh, right. reaction to what happened the day before and over tweak what we're doing. And Chipper, I know you're a proponent of that. Um, yeah. One thing I could tell you from working with Chip over the years, nobody reads lines better than he does, uh, and and it's indicative of his record right now. Okay, and especially in baseball, uh, football as well. So, uh, Chipper, tell the folks take if you'd be so kind to. T- Take the folks through what you initially look at and how you evolve to the point where you may finally make your decision on a game slash games. All right. Um, for the most part, I, I eliminate games where I have two to one favorites or higher. Um, I think anybody can lay, lay two to one and say you have the better team. And if you get if I give it out I and I get beat, um, they could have had it. It doesn't make any sense. I, so I eliminate that game to start with. And then, like you just said, more than anything, um, I look for an anomaly in the line, something that looks out of the ordinary and uh, for some reason. And um, the other day, I, I can't remember exactly what the game was. Team had lost four in a row and they were on the road and they were favored over a team that had won the last six. And that sort of tells you there's something wrong. There, there's something going on here in my mind anyway. Somehow um, the bookmakers are aware of more than we are. And why would they be making this team favored? For example, the Mets were favored the first game of the series against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Yep. And here's the Yankees eight games over 500. The Mets 10 games under 500. And the Yankee and the Mets were favored. Verlander was on the mound. That's p- predominantly the reason. But it doesn't always work out like that because the pitchers there, the number uh, may be inflated. But uh, I, I look for something that looks a little out of the ordinary. And I don't look to play a lot of plays, Ross. I'm looking no. to play one to three plays a day. And usually they're short favorites or short underdogs. Yeah, And that may change like during football season, like on a college football Saturday. Um, I know I could speak for all of us when when you put 70 games up on the board on any given Saturday in college football, uh, the more opportunities you get, we get to spot betting value. Uh, that's where your, your volume might go up a little bit, but uh, not to the, you, you know, we're not putting out 10, 12 plays a day. Sean Higgs does that and he does very well doing it. Yeah. So, um, you know, God bless him. Uh, it's just never been my style. in as long as I've been working with these two gentlemen, it hasn't been there's, uh, as well. Doug, you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I I, I think, you know, from, from the standpoint of what 
uh, what Chip is saying in particular, I think, you know, that's a very good approach to take, you know, from that standpoint, because, you know, it's just not only finding value, like I say, I, I agree with the certain things just sometimes rub you the wrong way, or, or in this sometimes it rubs the right way, you know, from that standpoint. So if you're able to uh, hone in on something, then you can t take it the next step further depending on your style and and then go dig deeper into the game to where you can find you know some other uh evidence of what you already believe then to go further and that's primarily at least for myself that's kind of what i do in the respect of going through the numbers like i do i you know to have a fresh take on the night before and then the next day have a try and improve that take or see if there is improvement that i can make on that take as well yeah, I mean, I'll give an example what Chip did yesterday. He had the ball, uh, the uh, Philadelphia Phillies over the Baltimore Orioles. Um, if you looked on the surface, I mean, you had a Baltimore team that's been red hot uh, as an underdog, and it looked like they had a decided edge in terms of the starting pitching matchup with Kyle Bradish, who had pitched very well over his previous five starts against a struggling uh, Ranger Suarez. And uh, Chip came out on top with Philadelphia. You know, I, I think I could speak for Chip when I say sometimes when it comes to sports betting, folks, if it looks too good to be true, yeah. more times than not, it is. Yeah. So there you go, folks. And uh, just a friendly reminder. You heard, uh, by the way, you heard me yesterday on what my approach is, so I don't want to be redundant. Uh, you can go back to the archives and, and watch the beginning of yesterday's show if you're interested to hear how I go about things with Major League Baseball. But uh, a friendly reminder, um, you'll see a WC button right there, or a logo right in the bottom right-hand corner of your page. If you're on a PC, if you're on your mobile device, you'll see a subscribe black subscribe button right below. Uh, take a second to subscribe, folks. It costs you absolutely nothing. There's no hidden agenda. And you'll be privy to some of the best sports betting information you'll find anywhere on the internet with some of the most uh, elite world-class sports handicappers you'll find anywhere as well, including us three, uh, Sean Higgs, uh, uh, also Jesse Shule, and uh, we'll be bringing on more guests as the football season progresses as well. So let's get right to the meat and potatoes. And uh, our show is... Brought to you by gamblersworld.net and gamblersworld.com. So be sure to check out those two sites. One portion of our site is the video portion. The other is our pick section, which is gamblersworld.net. All right, Chipper, uh, the Texas Rangers, who avoided a sweep yesterday with a blowout win over Houston, uh, they'll be uh, traveling to San Diego to take on the Padres uh, Dane Dunning on the mound for the Texas Rangers. He had been having a good year, but he's coming off a rough outing. And Joe Musgrove, um, a very underrated pitcher in my mind. Right. Again, he's having a nice year. 9.40 p.m. Eastern time start right now. The Padres are minus 175. The total is eight. And based on what you just told the people, I know you're not taking San Diego. At well, least on the money line. Not on the money line. No, the yeah. line is huge. Absolutely huge. Oh, and by the way, being a baseball buff, I thought I'd let you know, if I said 1927 to you, you would think Babe Ruth and 60 homers. But no, this state, 1927, July 27th, an 18-year-old player by the name of Mel Ott it is first major league home run, not 60 on the year, his first, and it was an inside the park homer. You're not going to see that too often anymore. Yeah. Anyway, great play <laughs> by Texas. Their season was on the line last night or on Wednesday night. I said to people, if they blow the first three games against Houston and they end up tied the rest of the way, they're really in trouble. And I thought that was the biggest game of the year for the Rangers. Down 3 nothing for them to come back and win the way they did, I think it re-established and re-settled them. Now, that being said, getting, I mean, $1.75 is absolutely outrageous, but maybe... Maybe you'd want to lay, if you like San Diego, which I don't know why you would. No, If you're going to play the Padres, the money line might be the way to go. And Ross, before his last start where he got beat by Detroit, Joe Musgrove, listen to this, 10 straight starts, one run, zero, one, three, two, one, two, one, zero, one. He gave up 15 runs in 70 innings. The guy's been really incredible out there. That's an 11 start. So, uh I don't want to play against them. I don't want to lay a dollar seventy-five. You want a free play from me here? I'm going to take San Diego on the, on the run line, or with the way Dwayne Dunning's been pitching as well. 
3.1 ADRA, your option could play, be to play the under. But I think Texas bats are too strong. I think the Padres bats are really strong. And and plus the fact, Ross, half the time these pitchers, it wasn't having a great day only giving up one hit. They're yanking them in his sixth inning. So um, I don't trust anybody's bullpen because if they're any good, they'd be starting in the first place. San Diego on the run line. San Diego on the run line over the uh, Texas Rangers and, uh, you know, Texas bullpen. Again, I keep bringing it up time and time again. Uh, you could rest assured you got a real good shot if you're tied or a little behind against Texas going into the late innings because their bullpen has just been very susceptible and very vulnerable. Doug, your thoughts on uh, Chipper's play? Yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree with them uh, on that one. You know, the, the Rangers, that was a clutch victory, certainly that they came up with last night. And, you know, and and because the, the other two games, I mean, they, well, they were at least winnable losing by one run, you know, at the other two games in that series. So like I say, I think there'll be some renewed confidence from them. Uh, you know, Musgrove, you know, he, I had him when they, uh, I took him Sunday when they lost to Detroit and San Diego was just flat as a pancake in that game. I mean, just, you know, it was the last day of a long road trip and you would think they would have played, you know, with a little more passion, but they did not. So, you know, that's baseball, especially, you know, as we get into uh, the so-called dog days of August coming, coming our way uh, these days. So no, but I, I agree with Chip on the, on his selection. All right. So there you have it, folks. Uh, Doug is on board with Chipper's San Diego Padres on the run line, uh, you're probably going to get that at uh, small plus money or or just laying uh, right. very little juice. So uh, very, I, I'm on board with that as well. I love Joe Musgrove. I don't like the way Dunning looked. I don't like Texas's bullpen. And, and it'd be real interesting, Doug, it's your time of year right now where the trade deadline's coming up. And I know uh, you get excited when that happens. You like to see where all the maneuvering goes and then reassess your handicapping going in after the trade deadline. Uh, but anyway, Doug is going to be taking a look at the Tampa Bay Rays and the Houston Astros. Sean McClanahan on the mound for uh, the Tampa Bay Rays, and it'll be uh, Christian Javier for the Houston Astros, a pair of left-handers. And uh, right now, as we speak, Tampa Bay is a minus 115 favorite. By the way, Houston Open is a $1.08, uh, minus 108 home favorite, and now it's Tampa Bay. Uh, as a road favorite, minus 115, Doug, and the total's eight and a half. Yeah, you know, with these two pitchers, I mean, well, you got two teams that are likely uh, playoff teams, okay, even th even though they're not in first place. They both look like at least wildcard teams, if not better. Uh, for, in both McClanahan's and uh, Javier, in their starts, they've each made 19 starts, and their teams are 14 and five in those in those starts. So pretty competitive situation from that standpoint. However, Tampa Bay, 5-15 and 15 this month, okay? They have been awful, okay? Houston, since July 2nd, 13-7. and seven. Now, McClanahan, he's had some minor injuries this year, had a, had a back thing, that they, you know, and he's, he's just not quite the same pitcher that he was last year. Um, his breaking stuff doesn't have the same bite, velocity down a tick or two, and, you know, it's hard to complain with a 2.89 ERA. <laughs> I'm the first to admit that. But when you look at his strikeout to walk, walk ratio this year, it's at 2.7 versus 5.1 a year ago. Now, Javier started out really strong this season. Uh, then the second start in June, things started to unravel for him a bit. He went through a stretch where he allowed four runs or more in four of five starts. And only once in those four games did he reach five innings. Uh, you know, and he, uh, what I believe is also his strikeouts he only had 10 strikeouts. Okay. In, in that period of games over covering five games. Now the Astros right-hander has been a bit better lately, but he and McClanahan have e ERAs over seven in their last three starts. Now the Astros, as Ross mentioned, open up as a slight favorite. Okay. Now that now they're a home dog, but McClanahan he's 0 and two with uh, in two starts against Houston with, with an ERA over seven and the Astros are 19 and 11 this year against left-handed starters and they are fifth in scoring at 5.6 runs per game when facing southpaws th this year javier has faced uh, tampa bay last or he did face tampa bay twice last year uh won both games went two and oh uh has had a one point or excuse me does have a 1.69 era ross i got a system like you do in, in many of these situations that pops up, I'm not going to go, not going to make it convoluted here, but you got a team that has a high slugging percentage who has not hit well in their last 20 games facing an opponent who has a, at least an average bullpen teams like the Rays in this exact situation are nine and 41 the last five years. 
I'm going to say the Astros soar to victory over Tampa Bay in this one. All right. So uh, Doug is uh, fading Sean McClanahan and uh, McClanahan's overall stats is Doug said, you know, he's not, he's not showing to be the power pitcher. He was a year ago, uh, still decent numbers, but oh, not the uh, dominant numbers, but he has came, come on of late uh, over the last couple weeks or so. So keep an eye on that. But you know what? Uh, you're right, Doug, against left-handed pitch in Houston. How about since last year, 64 and 24 versus left-handed starting pitcher. Uh, so there you go. I mean, uh, a lot to be taken from that. And uh, Doug, uh, even though with all that being said, he likes the Tampa, or, I'm sure Tampa Bay you like, right? Tampa, no, I like Houston. Houston, okay. Houston, Houston yep. plus 105 over Tampa Bay. All right. And I mistakenly said a pair of left-handers. Christian Javier is a right-hander. I stand corrected. Before you guys all lambaste me, which you <laughs> love to do. And you know, Chip, um, before we get your opinion on that game, uh, yesterday the guys were teasing me when we were going over, or two days ago when we were going over our beginnings, and I said I put my first bet in at, at seven years old with uh, a parley sheet. And both of these jokers, uh, Sean and Jesse, said, no, it wasn't that, Ross. You bet the North against the South against in the Civil <laughs> War. So, and, and I said, you're right. I took the North minus 130. But your thoughts on the Tampa Bay-Houston game? Well, I, I told you before, I don't know if I mentioned it to you, Ross, but Tampa looks like they can't even get into the playoffs right now. If that incredible start, they could falter. And I, I'm wondering if that can happen because yes, you can go up and you can go down. And right now, the way Tampa's taking the field, I think they're in trouble. Now, the, the best thing they have going for them is the team that most likely would have to pass them would be the Yankees. And I don't think that's going to happen. So um, it just, it's so scary to see what's going on with Tampa now. Like I said, five and 15 in the last 20 when they started out like 31 and one or whatever it was. I mean, being yeah. facetious there, but um, it, they set all kinds of records. And now that just doesn't seem like they can get anything going. And, you know, this could stay with a team. This continues yeah. trying to get out of doldrums like this. It's very, very tough. Once you get that downslide, nothing goes right in your head. And it takes, I, I don't know how to come out of it really or how they would. And um, I think they may be in trouble the rest of the way. Maybe not so much as, as clinching the number one spot in the playoffs, but, um, you know, they'll, prob they'll probably most likely get in because I don't think the Yankees are good enough or the Red Sox. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Tampa Bay, like you said, tremendous start, especially at home. And, uh, you know, for a while there, I just thought a bit of complacency set in. Uh, but you know what? The late complacency, lack of urgency, whatever it may be, Chipper, uh, it's as you well know in sports for a team, it's it's hard to turn that switch back on right. if you turned it off. And you know, it was mentioned to me, Ross, that they had a, um, the soft part of their schedule was early in the year, and they were playing. Um, you know, there was one they played Detroit, Kansas City, and they were playing teams like that back to back to back, um, and they were beating them, of course. And now and competition is a little bit tougher, and uh, they're sure they're certainly not rising to the occasion here. It's it's a uh, it's a tough, I, I don't know. I like McClanahan. I hate to fade him. I don't want to play yeah. against him, but I could fade this Tampa team the rest of the way until I see something different. You know, basically, yeah, the, other, the other thing I'd like to add real quick too sure. is that the thing I noticed in watching, I watched that uh, parts of all four games they played against Baltimore. And the thing that I noticed is the offense is really pressing. I mean, that's really the difference in the team. Yeah. They're not scoring like they were er earlier and they're leaving a ton of guys in scoring position. And you just see a guy swinging out of their shoes. Like uh, uh, if, if there was a film clip that I could put together that I saw of uh, Ariza, Ariza, I can't say his name, Ariza Rina, if I could put a film clip together, I mean, the guy, every single at bat was just swinging as hard as he possibly could, looking like he was trying to hit 500 foot home runs. And it's just kind of contagious throughout the entire team. That's what I'm seeing right now. Doug, if, you ever, want, think... if you ever want help with a name pronunciation, just ask Chip. Yeah, and I'm very good at this. I use the first name. Yeah. And by the way, Randy, who you're talking about. You know, Louis, yeah. Luis Servino? Servino or instead of Severino? Anyway. Uh, anyway, he, get, he picks winners. That's all we care about. This, yeah. he, but this guy was in the home run derby, and maybe that's where he lost his mojo because I, you yeah. know it's so different. And then coming back to regular, you're looking to launch everything. Just look at Gary Sanchez. He won it twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just won't leave that topic alone. No, no. I, I'll tell you day. what, Chip. You you play ball at a high level. I played a lot of baseball through high school and uh mm -hmm. and and after and I could tell you the worst habits you get into, whether it be slow pitch softball or or, or you're playing regular hardball. 
Uh, is sometimes the worst habits you can get into is taking batting practice for too long a period of time. Yeah. That's and I that's and I agree with you because in a correlation there, when you when you're getting to the home run contest, you're trying to hit a home run at every swing. And, and you open up so quick, Ross, because you're looking to pull it to left field, your hips open before it you normally would because you know the pitch is coming in easily. And you can't do it during the regular season because who knows what pitch is coming. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I agree with Doug, though, on this one. I mean, and I'll go one step further. I like Tampa Bay in the first five here. I mean, Doug just pointed out how Christian Javier has really struggled um, since early June. And uh, McClanahan seems to be coming on to me. I, I, I think I don't know if he's back to the form he he had last year. Maybe not. But he's still much better than most of the rest yeah, in the yeah. form he's in right now. Anyway, all right, let's get to my game real quick here, and then we get uh, get into our promos and uh, go from there. And uh, I am going to be looking at the game between the Boston Red Sox and the San Francisco Giants game to take place in San Francisco. And no chip, it's not Candlestick Park. It's not named that anymore. No, I San, was, huh? I San, Francisco, <laughs> San Francisco is a minus 150 money line home favorite. The total in this game is seven and a half. Cutter Crawford gets a start for the uh, Boston Red Sox. And when he struggled this year, it's been at Fenway Park. He's been sensational on the road. Six starts on the road, a 264 ERA and a 104 whip. Uh, Boston's bullpen over the last seven games, a 122 ERA. And they allowed zero home runs over 37 innings pitched during that course of time. Uh, and then um, you also look at the uh, home and away splits for Brandon Webb. And he's not that great on the road, but at home, he's been tough. Nine home starts, a 245 ERA, a 104 whip, and also averages just a shade under seven pitch per outing at home in those nine starts. Uh, the Giants really struggling offensively of late, 2.4 runs per game, uh, a 167 team batting average, a 240 on base percentage as a team, and all over the last seven games, the Giants 6-2 and two to the under in their last eight. They've scored two runs or less in six of those eight games. And one other occasion, they only scored three. And they're only averaging 5.1 hits per game over their last eight. San Francisco also coming off a day off. In their last three times they played at home coming off a day off, all three of them went under the total. You guessed it, guys. Boston and San Francisco under 7.5 for Ross Benjamin. And I'm going to send it over to you, Chip. Any thoughts on that game? Same thing with Doug. When we go to you, Doug, you you could express your thoughts on that game. But in each one of you guys, give out uh, your promo and where you want people to find you, how you've been doing of late, and what you may have coming up. Start with you, Chip. Well, I was originally a New York Giant fan back in the Polo Ground days. So, and I'm a Yankee fan, so I have to be rooting against the Red Sox. I mean, it just comes with the territory, and it doesn't matter what the line is or who's pitching. I got the Giants here. It's sentimental. It's a hate bet, no question. Okay, so Chip is going <laughs> uh, all the way up to minus 150, which is unusual for him, over to Boston Red Sox. And uh, I got to give credit. You got to beware there because, uh, to me, Boston looks like to play if I had to play a side. But I'm going to stick with my total of under 7.5. And, and I don't want to fade my buddy who's right now – uh, if, if you fade him, uh, do it at your own risk. Uh, Doug, your thoughts. Yeah. The, uh, well, first of all, there's what, what better name to have than cutter for a pitcher, by the way. Right. Okay. It doesn't get much better than that, but no, I, the, I, I like the giants as well. Uh, the reds, are, uh, the red Sox have been red hot, but now they got to go on the road and we'll see if, if that carries over, you know, from that standpoint, it, it might. Okay. I, but I, I, I agree. I like the I like the Giants just overall uh, in this situation. Uh, I'm I'm a little probably a little more on the fence than you are, Ross, on the total on that one. So we'll just have to see. And by the way, I do have here we have a show. Now I know it's not designed for this, but I just literally as I'm sitting here, I get a text that says Joe Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals was carted off the field today. Oh so that's goodness. something something to watch for. Wow. So just. Uh, I, I have no other facts other than getting a text from somebody that, yeah. that said that. So that, that's certainly of note. Jalen Ramsey also carted off the field today with a knee injury. <laughs> you know, I, I you know, look, I don't care where your allegiance is as a football fan, uh, but I hate seeing that during, yep. during you know, uh, I want to see the best players play. You know, I want to beat the best. I want to you know, handicap with the best players on the field, but 
there you have it. Every year, uh, it's unavoidable. We get these crucial injuries during training camp. Uh, it's really, I, I really hope that uh, it's nothing serious on both ends. So, right. in any event, Chip, uh, tell the folks what you might have coming up. It's uh, gamblersworld.net this week, today, this weekend, whatever the case may be. Well, Ross, you know, um, I try to stay as disciplined as I can, and I release my top play, my mega buck play every day. There's one play at least, and usually a three pack. I try to give three different selections. But I hang my head on, on that best bet right now. But, you know, we've been outrageous since the All-Star game. I think it's 11-2 and two to be exact. And uh, so every day, at, at, you just log on and follow the buy links and uh, make yourself an A-play winner or a Chip Charimbus winner. You can do it uh, with individual games or in a three-game package. So, And we're right here every day. I'm a, I know you're here, Ross, like giving free plays every day. So, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a great thing we have going on here for the exposure and the ability to – present our knowledge yeah and i appreciate that and we appreciate having you on the show chip uh thank you it's been a long time and uh you're gonna see chipper all through football season once again folks you go to gamblersworld.net you'll see him on top of the leaderboards uh over the last seven days over the last 30 days as well of course the site is brand new it just launched a few weeks ago uh but between him and matt matt fargo by the way guys what a machine this guy is i mean you you look at his picks He's picking 150s and 160 underdogs, and he's on an absolute tear right now. So you might want to keep an eye on that as well. Him and Chipper right at the top of the leaderboards. Chipper with the better win-loss record, uh, but uh, Matt Fargo's ROI, uh, return on investment, is just incredible. Doug, tell him uh, what you got going on at DocSports.com. And I know you've been doing good with the props, like you told people earlier. And what can they look forward to this weekend, even with your CFL? Yes. So I got the, like I said, the props have been doing ex exceptionally well. And so those will continue. Uh, obviously those, I have no idea until the day of the game is exactly what's going to happen. So just have to stop by the Doug Upstone page at Doc Sports in order to see what uh, variety I have there. I can tell you we're going uh, another week, a uh, week, I believe it's week nine in the CFL already uh, this season. And so I'm going to have a best bet. I've got one game I have highlighted. I've got the spread. I think it's going to be in, in a very good situation. Last week had an unfortunate push. Okay. And, and in that situation on a big play, but hey, you know, those things are going to happen. And in terms of Major League Baseball, I'm going to say this I have not had the year I wanted nor expected. Okay. And so at this point, yesterday, I, I had a nice talk with myself. Okay. And I listened really good when I talked to myself, by the way. <laughs> and, and, and so when I, I am just angry. So starting not today, cause there's such a, so few games starting Friday, I am on a mission for the rest of the season. I accomplished this last year uh, and I'm going to get, do it again, starting what is it? July 20, uh, 28th. And I'm on a mission with major league baseball from now until the last game of the world series. And I'm going to make something happen for everybody that watches these videos. If you want to participate and come to Doug Upstone page at doc sports for baseball. There you go. You can find Doug over at DocSports.com, and they've been around for 51 years. And there's a reason why they've been around that long. Longevity speaks volumes in this business. And uh, like GamblersWorld.net, DocSports.com, 10, 10 or 11 of the finest handicappers you'll find anywhere in the country. Of course, my favorite is Doug Upstone. Also, our uh, all of our buddy uh, Scott St Spritzer over at Doc Sports as well. So check them out there too, folks. Don't forget, you see, if you're on your PC, that WC button in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, that stands for the Winner's Circle, by the way. If you if you click that, it will automatically subscribe you to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, folks, and there's no hidden agenda. There's no strings attached. you just privy to all of this. Not only we give you free picks, but you hear our sports betting topics that we discuss above and beyond just the free picks, and our goal every day is to make you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. Don't forget, it. if you're uh, inclined to, uh, comment on our show. I mean, there's nothing wrong with disagreeing what we have to say, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. We're not asking you to, you, to kiss our behinds every day. It is nice, though. It's refreshing <laughs> when we do hear great. people. Well, you like actually, it when we do it for you. So. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in any event, um, I got to be careful there, Doug. You know, you, you guys walk <laughs> away. You don't come back for three days. I'm here every day, you know. So uh, in any event, folks, uh, audience participation is more than welcomed. Just keep it respectful, not only with us. Now, these personal texts, uh, I just won't tolerate um, disagreeing with us. 
and, and making a valid point when you disagree is okay as well. Okay, that's what sports betting is all about. In any event, uh, in that like button, you know, there's a like button on the bottom. It's it's like a tip jar, okay? When you go and <laughs> you have a good time and you're sitting there, and Doug knows a little about this, it knocking down four or five, and Chipper's been known to do a couple of those as well. Um, you're having a good time. The bartender treats you good. You give him a tip at the end of the night. You don't have to give us money. Just hit the like button. Makes us very happy. Until the next time, for Chip Cherimbus, Doug Upstone, and Ross Benjamin, we'd like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. God bless and take care, folks. All right. I see you recorded this.